Apple Log. Is it a giant gimmick constantly pushed by us YouTubers just because it gets the clicks? Or does it actually have a place in the creative world with creative professionals, content creators, or your everyday person who just likes to capture good images? I've made a ton of comment talking about how incredible Apple Log is, but in today's video, I also want to touch upon five situations that I've thought of may not be the best time for Apple ProRes Log. Jumping right into it, the first situation is going to be if you immediately need to use AirDrop or some sort of wireless transfer. Because here's the thing, ProRes files, huge. For example, if I go to watch my kid do a performance at his school or something, I know that right after I'm done shooting that for a couple minutes, Michelle's gonna want it, we're gonna wanna send it to our friends and family. Now, Apple's pretty good if you need to send the video file through, say, an app that doesn't support ProRes or just intelligently compresses it back to an H.265, but it still can be this impractical thing where now you have a huge file, if it's shot in log, then everyone's gonna ask you, why does this look so bad? And it's just usually more a hassle than what it's worth. So if you have a moment that's for instant shareability, keep ProRes off. Number two, clips with bad flares iPhones have been having a problem for the past handful of years. If you're in a situation, normally a low light one, where you have a lot of tiny little light sources, it's going to create the ugliest lens flares of all time. In my opinion, those clips are already ruined. And so there's no chance of that being a like professional usable clip. So you might as well keep Apple Log and ProRes turned off because that clip is just gonna be junk anyway. I'm really curious if you guys are gonna agree with me on number five. I just wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor, which fits perfectly into this video, and that is One LUT. So the guys over at One LUT wanted to create the best conversion LUT for Apple ProRes Log to match the king of color science in the camera world, and that is from Aerie. So they picked up an Aerie Alexa, I believe Mini LF. They used this Aerie LUT to match the iPhone footage too, and ultimately they were able to create what you have been seeing on my channel for a good month or two. Here you have Apple Log. Now you have Apple's conversion LUTs, which in my opinion just look super meh, but the one LUT, I mean, it's just got that little, you know, it's got that hint of airy color science to it. Definitely check out the one LUT LUT in my description down below, and you can actually get 10% off if you use my code down there. I also decided I'm gonna give away a couple licenses from one LUT to a couple lucky people over in my iPhone filmmaking guide. I just spent the past week completely rebuilding my website from the ground up. You should all go check it out. My wife and I spent a ton of time reworking everything, making the landing pages to my different courses and guides more clear about what they include and what you guys can benefit from it. Seriously, no pressure at all to buy anything I ever create, but to the over thousand people who have joined in the past year, seriously, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you and how it's allowed me to just focus even more energy on this channel to make even better videos for you guys. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, check them out in the link in the description and huge shout out to One Let for sponsoring this video. All right, getting back to number three, let's go back to that situation from earlier where maybe I'm filming something of my kids. If you know you're gonna be filming for like, 10 plus minutes, you better know the storage limits to your iPhone. Because even as someone with the terabyte iPhone, I go on vacation and I sometimes have these clips that run for quite a few minutes at a time, you can fill up an, a one terabyte iPhone in no time doing that. And so unless it's for professional work or it's something that you just fully are dialed in and know that you want to be in ProRes log, I turn that thing off and just go, no, H.265 is gonna be just fine for this. Number four, this one I may get a little pushback on, but low light if you're using the non-wide lens. They have made great improvements to the ultra wide camera and the telephoto. But let's be honest, they are still significantly lesser quality in extreme low light situations compared to the wide lens. And while ProRes does give you a lot of low light benefits, ProRes as a codec in general, even on professional cameras, will usually have better noise patterns than even other like raw codecs. I personally just think if you're using the ultra wide or the telephoto in extreme low light, I can see an argument being made for it, but it's just not my thing if I'm in that situation. And number five, the most vague of them all, medium shots. There are a couple situations where I think the iPhone 15 Pro using Apple ProRes Log can literally fool people into thinking it is a much more professional camera. But at the end of the day, it is still a very tiny sensor. And so the thing that you cannot fake, especially in shooting in ProRes Log because you can have cinematic mode, is depth of field. Now, if you have a subject that's pretty close to you, you can actually get some pretty decent roll off in the background. And of course, if you're shooting something far away and you're going for like landscape shots, well, you want everything to be in focus. so. 
it works there. But if you have a generic medium shot where there's not a lot of natural depth in your composition, in my opinion, it's gonna look very much like a phone footage shot. And in that case, a lot of the times you might as well just shoot it in a regular phone footage kind of way. Just shoot it H265, save the space. But I need to be honest, this list was actually pretty hard to produce. I think when ProRes first came out, it was quite the debate because there were a lot of situations where you could not tell the difference between just ProRes and H265 prior to Apple Log. And this was because regular Adobe Vision ProRes, you still had the same issues that every other phone had. You had tone mapping issues, over sharpening, iffy colors that were hard to color grade. But since the iPhone 15 Pro and Apple Log, I have to say I've integrated iPhone footage into nearly every single video and not just ones talking about the iPhone, just in my professional work. I've used it as B-roll, secondary angles, angles that would be much harder to rig a bigger cinema camera. And one of my favorites is the top-down shots because all my other cameras are way too heavy for to throw on a C-stand. And with the iPhone, I can literally just put an iPhone clamp on my microphone arm and boom, I have a top down shot that perfectly matches and mixes in with my regular camera footage. This is the first time that shooting video on a phone is truly not a gimmick. And because I've been using the one LUT for a couple months now, and I have put it through every scenario of bad lighting, stupid silly clips that mean nothing to professional work with shooting weddings that do matter. It's been the closest to one click color grade kind of solution that I've ever found. Oh, I totally forgot to mention that they also created a LUT for the Gen 5 color science on the Blackmagic Pocket cameras. So every video where you've seen this new lighting setup back here for the past couple of weeks, shooting from my Pocket 6K Pro, that's all been one LUT, and iPhone footage for the past couple of months have all been one LUT. So shout out again to them, not only for sponsoring this video, but for truly making an awesome product. Get your 10% off in the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.